Dark Passage from 1947 was an amazing crime film starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall in their third movie together. It's an excellent crime film featuring a man accused of murdering his wife who has escaped from prison and is out to prove his innocence and who, to avoid detection, takes some extreme steps. I love this film, and thanks to my friend Florida Gregg for this recommendation. I'll recap the film and then share some closing thoughts. The film opens up with a prison break from San Quentin, and I know by now that if it's a crime film that opens up with a man on the run from prison, it's going to be good, especially if that guy on the run happens to be Humphrey Bogart. But here's where the film gives us an interesting twist. From the beginning, we see the point of view of the film protagonist, and we hear a Humphrey Bogart voiceover as he flees from prison, but we don't see his face at all. The camera eye shows us what he sees as he hides away from the pursuing police. Now, Bogart's character here is Vincent Perry, and he's able to avoid the police. And he grabs a ride with this character, Baker. He's a cheerful guy. He's played by Clifton Young, who has lots and lots of questions for Vincent as they travel. And, you know, we can tell he's suspicious of Vincent's clothing and his wet shoes and so on. And Vincent makes excuses for all of it. But soon enough, exposition radio kicks on to reveal that a man has escaped from prison. Baker puts it all together, but a little too late. Pow! Please! Please stop my hotel! Stop! Stop! Well, Vincent beats this guy up and takes his clothing. But who should pull up alongside but Lauren Bacall as the character Irene Jansen. She mysteriously knows who he is and offers to give him a ride. She drives into San Francisco and gets through a police roadblock with cool confidence. She really seems like a pro at this sort of thing as he's hiding in the back of her car. But we wonder, what is her interest in this Vincent character? And to be fair, it's a little weird that she just happened to find him when she did, but we'll let that go and move on. They head into San Francisco. She goes through the toll booth and has a brief exchange with actor Vince Edwards as a toll booth cop, which was kind of cool to see him there briefly. They get into the city and they head to her place and sneak inside. Now, once there, he questions why she's doing this. And she reveals that when hearing about the case in the news, she didn't believe it. And she even wrote to the editor about it, saying that she thought that he got a raw deal here. Now, she leaves to get him some new clothing. He gets cleaned up. And shortly after, he's visited at the door by Agnes Moorhead as a character Madge. And from behind the door, he tells her to just go away. He recognizes her voice, though. She was a woman who had testified against him in court and was responsible for his conviction. So she leaves, and he kind of goes snooping around, looking at Irene's scrapbook to try to understand better who she is and what is her interest in him. We discover that her own dad died in prison, wrongly accused of killing her stepmom. Well, they talk over coffee, and what's really neat here is that we still have not seen Bogart's face at all. And instead, it's just the character Irene. And she's basically speaking directly to the camera. And honestly, it's a little disarming and almost a little uncomfortable as that dialogue is directed right to us, the viewer. There's a lot of that in this film, but you do kind of get used to it. We are kind of stepping into the shoes of Bogart's character, Vincent. It's really well done. And I really loved how they did this in the film. But the two get to know each other better. We, we, the viewers, start to understand a little bit better what's going on as well. Well, that night, Vincent leaves Irene's place. As he's planning to look for evidence of who the real killer was, he hails a cab. And I love how his face continues to remain cast in shadow. We still don't see him yet. He's driven around by chatty driver Sam. He's played by Tom D'Andrea, who tells a funny story about goldfish and asks questions and so on, and basically reveals that he knows who Vincent is, but he's decent about it, just wants to talk to him. In fact, he suggests a friend who could do some minor plastic surgery to change his face from his own home. Yeah, I don't know about that, but Vincent decides to go along with this. Now, before he goes in for the surgery, Vincent visits his friend, George, who's played by actor Rory Mallison, is an old friend of his and asks if he would be able to stay there post-surgery. 
George seems like a decent guy. He just wants to get his own life together and play his horn. So Vincent finally goes and meets with the doctor, this Dr. Walter Coley, who's played by actor Housley Stevenson. He's an actor with just a very distinct voice and wrinkly old face. I love the character of faces like this. He's a great actor. And honestly, there's nothing in the world like seeing a doctor character sizing up his next job with a cigarette in his hand. <laughs> I love it. The pre-surgery dialogue is just straight up creepy. We know it's coming. And there's the weird conversation about how he can not just change his age, but how for the wrong person, he could make them look like a bulldog and things like that. Things that you do not want to hear from a doctor prior to getting facial surgery. I mean, let's be honest, plastic surgery is kind of creepy to begin with, but when done in the 1940s in some doctor's house, well, we're talking another level of creepiness. And I love how the doctor approaches him with a straight razor. <laughs> oh man, but we find out it's just for a shave pre-operation. <laughs> oh, and I love how while talking, the doctor also makes an aside about how he was kicked out of the medical association. You know, these are things you don't want to hear before you're getting operated on. It's just a great scene. Well, as the surgery begins and the anesthetic and the drugs kick in, what follows is this crazy trippy dream sequence. I honestly wish I could put the whole segment here, but you know how those YouTube copyright bots are. I got to play it safe or Warner Brothers is going to slap me down for this one too. So following surgery, Bogart, he's all wrapped up like Claude Rains from The Invisible Man. The doctor gives him some post-op instructions and wishes him well and leaves. Sam gives him a lift back to his friend's house, this guy George, and then he leaves. But however, on going inside, he finds that his friend George has been murdered. But by whom, we wonder? So, poor Vincent has to make his way on foot back to Irene's place. And he makes his way up lots and lots of steps. We're talking the San Francisco Filbert steps. And he is utterly exhausted and just collapses outside of her place. So she finds him, brings him inside, nurses him back to health. Now, while recovering, she shows him a newspaper showing that the headline is that his friend George was murdered, but that Vincent's fingerprints were found at the crime scene. This poor guy just can't get a break, can he? Well, they're having coffee together when this character Bob calls, and he wants to stop by for a visit. So Vincent goes to hide while Irene goes to intercept him. But unexpectedly, Madge shows up before he does. Now, Madge is worried that Vincent is on the loose and she's asking if she can stay there with Irene. Irene refuses and they argue. And around this time, Bob arrives. Now, he's played by actor Bruce Bennett, who I actually remember from The New Adventures of Tarzan from 1935. It's an early review that I did. And honestly, I thought he was one of the better versions of Tarzan because he was a more articulate Tarzan who could, you know, put complete sentences together. And <laughs> anyhow, he's here. After some small talk, they all clear out. And it's around this time that we see that the character Baker from earlier in the film, he's outside watching. Whoa, well, where did he come from and what is he up to? So the manhunt continues and there's a reward for Vincent. A week has passed and Irene helps him to remove the bandages. And yes, even the scissors clipping the bandages away, it's a little unsettling, but he finally gets free of them. And finally, at Roughly one hour into the film, we get to see Bogart's actual face as he inspects the surgeon's work in the mirror. Hey, he looks just like Humphrey Bogart. I'm sure I look all there. That's all right, I'm not. He gets all cleaned up and dressed, and when he walks into the room, I love how Irene's eyes just sparkle watching him as he comes in and plays a record. Vincent is all brand new and completely unrecognizable. And he's determined to go out and find who had him framed for murder. So there's a little bit of romance, a brief kiss, but he's determined. He has to solve this mystery. So no time for sugar. There's a tearful goodbye and he's on his way. So Vincent stops at a small diner and a curious detective, played by actor Douglas Kennedy, asks him a bunch of questions. But Vincent, now going by the name Alan, 
keeps to his new identity, tries to avoid suspicion, but doesn't really get away with it. And since there's a manhunt going on, this detective is determined to bring him downtown for questions. It was interesting to see actor Tom Faden as the guy running the cafe. He was also an invasion of the body snatchers, just has kind of a familiar face. Anyhow, Vincent gets away and finds a different place to stay for now. But that character Baker has managed to track him down. The new face just didn't fool him. And he wants to sort of extort $60,000 from him. You know, he was a small time crook, he says, and now I'm a big time crook. The actor Clifton Young is just great here, by the way. He's, to me, he was like a toothy Elisha Cook Jr. type character. Just creepy and mean. But we do begin to see that he's not just an ordinary con, but he's shrewd and cunning. He tells us that he kind of came to earlier in the film after he had been punched by Vincent and he was able to see at just the right time where Vincent was going and that he was leaving with Irene and he tracked her down as well. So they drive together towards Irene's place with lots of local footage of San Francisco at the time and Baker rambles on about his plans but too late realizes that Vincent has taken him to a remote part of town and then he slams on the brakes and grabs a gun from him. And this leads to a big fight on a rocky cliff by the San Francisco Bridge. And with only about 10 minutes left in the film, I'm going to stop the review here. Can Vincent defeat this nasty Baker character? Will he ever clear his name? And will he ever see Irene again? Well, you have to see the exciting ending for yourself. So just a few closing thoughts. I loved this movie. Dark Passage was wonderful and sure, it can get a little strange delving into some of the face-changing stuff, but I still enjoyed it just the same. This was made by Warner Brothers, and it was produced by Jerry Wald and directed by Delmer Daves, who had worked with producer Wald on several films previously. And this film was based on a crime story by David Goodis. Now, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall are, as usual, wonderful together on the screen. And I think their real-life marriage just adds to the believability of their characters' affections that they have for one another. And as mentioned, this was their third collaboration following films like The Big Sleep. And while maybe not as popular as that film or as To Have or Have Not, I still think that this one was an excellent crime film and I love the chemistry between the two. And you know, it was really interesting how you don't see Bogart's actual face until the second half of the film. Because, I mean, at the time, in 1947, Bogart was a huge celebrity. So it's fascinating that for a good chunk of the film, all we hear is his voice. And then when we do actually get to see his face, he's got a good amount of it wearing uncomfortable-looking facial bandages. <laughs> so it was an interesting twist and a, maybe a gimmick, you could call it, but I thought it worked really well in this film. It was neat to see Agnes Moorhead as that scheming, snooty character trying to nose her way in. And also Clifton Young deserves mention as the very well-played, creepy character, Baker. He was an excellent nemesis to Vincent's character. You know, I honestly know very little about Clifton Young as an actor, only that he was originally part of the Our Gang series, or the Little Rascals, or Hal Roach's Rascals. It's a series I honestly know very little about, but maybe that'll be a future review here. Camera eye technique was really interesting, and it's been used in a previous film, The Lady in the Lake from 1946, which is another detective thriller I need to check out. Now, an observation about the surgery scene with that super creepy doctor making those disturbing pre-operation comments, it reminded me strongly of a similar scene in Steven Spielberg's movie Minority Report, which was sort of a futuristic sci-fi crime noir film where we have a heavily medicated Tom Cruise. He's about to have eye replacement surgery in a equally creepy back alley scenario with the surgeon who also makes disturbing comments. And I can't help but wonder if maybe Spielberg drew some inspiration from this film when he made that. And I have to comment again about the beautiful filmmaking here by director Daves and cinematographer Sid Hickox, there are so many visual treats in this film. You know, as I was watching it, I had to stop it more than a few times just to take a note of some of them. You know, things like 
location footage that we see throughout the film. Or devices like the unique point of view from the runaway barrel. Or some of the distinctly crime noir devices like the character glancing out through the blinds. Or the soft, glowy lights on Lauren Bacall's face. And on and on. It's a beautifully crafted film. The music was excellent. It was done by Franz Waxman. And as an aside, I love it when a composer seemingly puts a orchestral flourish when their own name is on the screen. All right, I've rambled on enough about this film. It was excellent. Dark Passage was a brilliant crime film with Bogart and Bacall. It's one worth checking out.